Hi, and welcome to That's So Nova. My name is Nova, welcome. If you're here for the first time, today we're going to be doing a small tutorial. If you're a repeat subscriber, thank you for coming back, and we're gonna be doing the tutorial for the Shazzy wristlet from Aura Rosa. Um, this is the 2.0 version. The, there was There's an original version that came out with a grommet and it's really awesome and I personally need that a couple times. But this is a 2.0 version where it's going to have a connector and no grommet installation. So if you're ready, we're going to start. So first you're going to need your pattern. This is a free PDF that you can get at horrorosa.com and I will have everything in the description box. You're going to have a cut list, so you're going to need your main panels out of vinyl, cork, you can, you can possibly use canvas or um, cotton, you would just need to interface it as it's um, like vinyl. So you're going to need your main panel, your two, we're going to need our wristless strap, wristless, <laughs> our wristlet strap, we have two zipper tabs one connector here's the other tab and we're going to need our card slot which is this <laughs> we're going to need our zipper pocket and i've penned little post-its because some of the measurements are similar and i didn't want to put the wrong piece with the wrong piece zipper pocket and it's interfaced in the back. And you're gonna need your slip pocket, your main lining, you need two of those, and your card slot backing, as well as a zipper facing. All the corresponding interfacing pieces for the card slot, zipper pocket, slip pocket, and card backing all have their measurements in imperial uh, and metric in the first column. You would also need two um, zippers, one a number five that is 10 inches and a number three that is seven inches. If you have your logo, not it's not needed, but if you have your logo, you can definitely put it on there as well as we need a D ring and a swivel class. I'm using three fourths of an inch. The pattern even calls for like a half an inch, um, three fourths of an inch. And I think there's some people in the testing group right now that are using one inch. So all the interface, all the inter you interface all your pieces and there's like around the card slot, one inch around. So around here, there's a, like a one inch barrier. So that way it doesn't create a lot of bulk. What you're going to do is take your card slots and you're going to lay the pieces out in front of you. Then you can grab a pen or a, a washable marker. I use those a lot because when I wash it, it just comes out. But something that won't bleed or erase from heat. You can use even, I don't know, the air erasing one. I've, I've had some hit or miss when I hit it with heat, it'll stay permanently. So we're gonna take the card slot Slot. <laughs> we're going to take the card slot from the left hand side and we're going to begin with the measurements. The first one is two and three fourths. The second one is one and one, three, one and three fourths. The third is two and one fourths. The third, the fourth is one and three fourths. The fifth is two and one fourths. The sixth is one and three fourths. The seven is two and one fourths. And the eighth is one and three fourths in which will leave a remaining amount of three and one fourths. Okay, so what we're gonna do if we follow figure three is flip the card slots in front of us. We're still gonna be working from the left-hand side and we're going to press this line, the, the line that you just drew. One thing that truly helps me with when I'm making card slots is I usually take a ruler with me over to the, this, the where I'm ironing at and I like, you know, try to get it as nice and taut as I can to the ruler, remove it and then iron it. But then someone told me about hot rulers. This is not a need, it's just a want. 
um, they run anywhere from five, sometimes $10, and they're heat resistant. You can stick it in, and it also will measure. It actually measures, I can see it lands on the two and three fourths mark. I can hit it with the iron, flip it, press, take this line now, press it, hit it with the iron. Yeah, this thing like saved my life with card slots. I was not a fan of doing it because mine would always come off a little wonky. This is a big helper. <laughs> so, but the ruler works too. So once we get all of it together, we are going to top stitch four of these pockets. One, two, three, four. And you can do your stop top stitching however you like, whether it's 3.5 um, stitch length, four. Um, I like my pocket stitch probably at a 3.5. So make sure you put it together and everything is lining up right because you don't want to accidentally top stitch the wrong thing. So I usually take it, this is how my card slot's gonna look. So I take the top one, fold it down, and I'm going to do it each one. I, I would tell you to back stitch at the beginning of each end, but we will be trimming off the ends. So <laughs> it's not needed really. We're going to be trimming so i'm going i'm using a one eighth of an inch foot i'm folding my tails and i i completely went off the track here that's okay i'm going to recover right now by going over i was looking at my husband i blamed him he distracted me <laughs> my apologies mm -hmm. All right, and then I'm going to take this third one. I'm using um, cotton from Connecting Threads. They, I, whenever they have a sell on uh, cotton, I usually load up on for linings. It's just I love their cotton. It's really. It's really not that expensive. Their cells sometimes are like ridiculously good for like $2.99 a yard and it's just beautiful cotton. Whenever, so that's my favorite time. I was like, oh, they have a sale. Yes, I can get all the lining I can get. Okay, we're gonna put our card slots. All right, we have that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to measure in four. Trying to get a ruler. We're going to measure in. Not. I'm going to use chippy. Okay, so like now you guys are seeing my little dirty secret. I am not afraid to use a an um a old ruler. I won't. I won't throw it away. I love this ruler. <laughs> Let's see. So we're going to measure in four and one fourth of an inch. And I'm going to take, I thought I had a chalk pencil here. Hold on for one second, I'll be here. Just, I'm gonna move some things, you're gonna hear some noises. It's okay. <laughs> I usually have like a chalk pencil at every stand, but apparently not today. So we're going to line up one, four, one fourth of an inch and make a line. And you just want to do it on the other side too to make sure. Everything winds up and it does. We're going to make sure your pockets look really even and we're going to sew down that chalk line. I like chalk, <laughs> this is so weird. You talked to four years ago, me, and I would be like, no, heat erasable pens for life. Um, <laughs> now I like chalk pencils because they, it just wipes off effortlessly. And if you want to, you can go down with another stitch, but that these stitches are gonna be secured. Then what we're going to do is we are, I'm gonna hop on over to figure number 
seven and we are going to measure four inches out from the line. And I'm just gonna, cause I'm gonna cut this. I'm going to just draw this. I'm not, I don't have a, my rotary, so I'm just gonna use scissors. Do that on the other side too. Do four inches out. Just even, even this out, and it's easier if you let your pen go up towards the where the pockets is because if you go down, it's going to try to pull my machine. Just wanted to sew on its own right now. <laughs> um, it tries to pull down with the pocket. Right, then we're going to align our ruler either three fourths of an inch to align it to cut off three fourths of an inch and on space of top card. I'm sorry, above the top card. You either on the top on the top pocket, you're gonna align your ruler either one inch if that's what you need, or three fourths of an inch, depending on how much space you need for the top of your credit cards. So I'm going to align it with the top lip of the first credit card slot, three-fourths of an inch, and then I'm just going to draw a little line real quick, and that's it. I'm going to trim this off. So if you want a little bit more space between the card slot and the slip pocket, then you can leave it at one inch. I'm just going to do it at three fourths of an inch. There's the options though. All right. And then on the bottom, we're going to get our grid ruler and we're going to make sure that this pocket is exactly five inches. And what you're going to do is you're going to draw that line and you're going to if you have a rotary at your desk then by all means do that um i don't because uh, i have a tendency of cutting awkward so i have had some incidences with the rotary cutter and being at my work table so i just go to my cutting desk when i want to do it okay so from here we are going to grab your car, your, we trimmed our card slot, now we need the card slot backing. See, it's gonna fit like that. We are going to, we're going to sew this around using a three eighths of an inch because I'm, I, like to pivot exactly at the three eighths of an inch. I'm just going around and drawing my three eighths of an inch seam allowance around the whole entire thing real quick. It's worth, for me, it's completely worth doing this because if I don't see the mark, I will go off. Like, oh yeah, I can uh, eyeball it. And then I'm like, why is my, my pocket wonky? <laughs> So I'm going to leave a three to four inch hole, I mean opening, so that you can birth it. Place this on top and it should all line up nice and neatly. Pop a few clips or pens, because right now we're working with all cotton, so you can definitely do pens. And I'm going to start at right here, the open one of the sides of the opening. Three eighths of an inch. Go forward and then a couple stitches back. I'm still at that 3.5. When I get to the line, I'm going to put my needle down at the 
three eighths of an inch line up. And just when you're sewing, remember when you're going up or going down, this pocket right now is going to go up and up towards the pocket slot, so it's not going to ship. When I go down here, the pockets naturally want to pull down, so just be a little bit cognizant about that. Like, just like, okay, you're not going to shift on me today. to stop with the needle down okay so this is where the card slots want to move you can do a couple of things you can you can use a owl or I'm, I can't apparently I'm just gonna wing it but like you can see the card so just an owl would help because you can just hold it down instead of having your finger nearby it. But we do what we could do what we got. And see, it went fine. And then I'm going to go over here to where the opening is. Then I'm going to back stitch. All right. We're going to, I'm going to put a, uh, like an inward V because it's going to where the opening is. And then I'm going to trim down this to about one eighth of an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these pinking shears to help relieve some of the bulk. And don't, uh, don't cut into your uh, seam allowance. to turn this right sides I'm just going to tuck in the little tells we made with the V's and then put a couple clips. And let's see, oops, I'm just going to pull these corners out a little bit, but it looks really good. Our little credit card slots. And now we're going to take one of our lining pieces, the main lining piece, and we are going to first top stitch this down the top pocket that we just finished. I'm going to poke out this corner a little bit with the awl. And we're going to top stitch that one eighth of an inch back stitch on this one. Trim your threads. And then we're going to 
finer, I like to finer center and just crease it. I just use my nails real quick or my, my thumb pads and crease that. And our center would be the line that we stitched. And we're going to put our card slots two and one eighth of an inch. Okay, and then it's going to be five eighths of an inch up. Okay. And now what you could do is because we're now messing with this, you could put double sided tape on the bottom of it. put double set of tape on the bottom of it and like you can hold it in place you can take a couple of pens and just like pop some in because this is cotton so you can just pop a couple of pens and it won't shift or you can take it to your machine and be like I got this I'm gonna pop some pens <laughs> all right so what we're gonna do we're gonna top stitch um, the, to the lining one eighth of an inch around. What I like to do, I'll show you, is when I have pockets like this that um, are gonna be a slip pocket and I know this will be an area that's been gonna be used a lot, I like to take it, go a couple stitches back, stop at the where the pocket lining is, go forward and back a couple of t uh, stitches. This is called bar tacking and it helps with that that area so it can just hold up a little bit better through the wear and tear. I'm using a 9014 organ needle. I think I did not say that. I'm using 40 weight thread, stop with thread from, I think I got this thread through Steve at Sewing Gold. And it's a neutral color. And I'm using a one eighth of an inch or a zipper foot or a narrow foot. It's called so many things. So I'm gonna stop there and then I'm gonna just bar tack a few times. Cause that's what I do. All right. Remove the pens. Trim your threads. And we go on to the next pocket. And for this, we have a slip pocket that we're going to use. So I'm getting my main lining out, the zipper pocket, and then I got the slip pocket. We're gonna um, put the slip, si slip pocket right sides together where the short edges meet. And again, I'm gonna draw a 3 eighths of an inch. I like, because this little, this little wristlet has like, you got your credit card, you got a zipper pocket, you have all these different pockets and it's just, it has it all. It's like the perfect grab and go, like mini clutch. And I think it would be a good gift, especially for teachers, like people that are in, like, like I, these could be kind of a cool tailgating gift, actually. We're almost to that season, people. Almost to that season. So we're going to have a two to three inch. Turn. So I'm going to, I drew my little B and I'm going to start here and back stitch a couple stitches.
And then when I get to the first V, I just backstitch and then I'm gonna bring the threads over to the next V, go forward, backstitch. So I still have that gap, it just is, it's just I didn't have to like break the thread. <laughs> I'm just going to paint. You don't have to paint. You could just cut it down to one eighth of an inch. I'm just, I think I'm just used to painting by now, like everything. All personal preference, right? Let's see. we're going to turn if a, a easy way to iron to make sure that this stays um, stay uh, stays placed and nice and crisp when you turn it if you iron it ahead of time like the opposite sides it will like stay nice and crisp after you turn it it's like wants to automatically go in onto itself not use click off my the ink to my pen and just use it as a blunt tool when in doubt use whatever is around you <laughs> all right see even with like just me like using my thumbnails to kind of just crease it if you do that one little step it just I don't know, it makes the biggest difference. Okay, we have that. And we're going to top stitch real quick. And I'm going to do that a one eighth of an inch. I'm just using the tip of the owl just to poke in any areas that looks like a little concave. One eighth of an inch, back stitch. Okay, and we're going to we're gonna set this aside for now, and we're going to grab our zipper pocket and our lining. in our zipper pocket piece. So for the zipper pocket piece, for the lining, I mean, we're going to grab our zipper pocket piece. And again, finding your centers helps tremendously. You have that crease. And then I, so I can show better on camera, I'll just put it right here so you see. So there's the white. We're going to take our zipper pocket piece and find its centers. And you're going to draw three fourths of an inch down a six inch line and then come up on the zipper pocket piece and go three fourths of an inch up and you're gonna make a six inch pocket. So for zippers, I like to go for a tight, um, a tighter, smaller uh, stitch, so I can hit those corners really, really well. Um, I'm going to go for a two, and it's cotton, so it won't perforate or anything. It'll be okay. Make sure you back stitch. When you get to the corner where you're about to go down, have the needle all the way down and then go up and 
go up until you hear you see it visibly go up and then stop so this is just to prevent those round or skip stitches doing awesome We're almost done with the lining and you know the lining is the most sometimes the most complicated part you're doing an awesome job if you ever feel like I'm going too fast just remember you can stop this video at any time pause it reassess sew, and then continue to sew along with me at your leisure the the reason for the videos is that there's a part that you don't see or when you read you're not understanding that's what we're here to do is try to help also the Aura Rosa show off group oh, brilliant if you have a question everybody wants to answer you and help you And the designer herself is very helpful, like really helpful. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make a center cut and we're gonna cut into a V. Now, some people need to draw this V out. You can, and then draw a line in the center. I do that sometimes because I could be completely off. Other times it's just like the luck of the draw. <laughs> With this, I tell people to get a pair of sharp, 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 sharp scissors because I feel like that's what makes and breaks the um, the corner, the corners, so they don't pucker. Embroidery thick scissors are really good for short, small snips that are like very precise. Don't cut into the stitching. Just right near up against it. Near it, but not on it. If that's how you do cut into the stitching, it's not the end of the world. You can go around the box one eighth of an inch all the way around and go from there. Okay. Okay, you're gonna be at your iron, but if that's it, you're not, you can, <laughs> you can use like a seam roller or your thumb pads. Again, sometimes when you see tools, they're not needs, they could be wants, but they're cool wants. <laughs> I like a seam roller because I use a lot of vinyls and waterproof canvas and you can't necessarily, you're not supposed to. <laughs> um, sew with them i'm not so but use heat on them so there's that what i like to do from here is i like to take a little double-sided tape that i know i'm not going to sew over and put it make sure that it's in an area that it's not going to get top stitched or sewn on so that way it doesn't gum up your needles but what I do is I take it, I take one side, make sure it's as crisp as I can get it. Just let it stick. You, of course, if you iron it, it'll just be easy peasy. It will just lay flat. We have a nice tight pocket zipper. Then we're going to grab our three inch zipper, and that size three zipper that's seven inches long. And we are going to baste one side. Why the fabric's there? I'm going to increase the stitching. It's still, it's still out of two. I'm just using a dress, a dress, all-purpose dress one. That's the perfect size three zipper. You can use a size five. It just, it may not, the actual tape may not be seen because there is a difference. Most size three zippers are just one, the tape is only one inch wide.
All right. This is laying flat, but if it wasn't, I would have just seam rolled it or ironed it. We're going to put some double-sided tape. Got some double sided tape. You can do a one eighth of an inch. Um, I can't, I'm just using one fourth of an inch. And I'm removing the backings. And on page 34, we're going to, not page 34, I'm sorry, on figure 34, we're going to copy and we're going to line up so that the middle of the zipper teeth are in the middle. Oh, um, with a dress, I do a quick whip stitch to keep these sections closed. Because this, this wasn't taped by the yard, this was just a dress, all-purpose dress zipper. I have a bunch of these and sometimes when there's little projects like this, I'm like, yes, let's hurry up and use that. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to sew on the top one eighth of an inch. And I'm only about, I'm probably about one eighth or one fourth of an inch away. Snip it. All right. Then we're going to flip the pocket up and we're going to do another top stitching right here at one eighth of an inch. I like how she does this because at first, when I first tested it, I was like, what does she mean? Don't we need to go on the sides? And I'm like, no, just follow the method. <laughs> I do a few back stitches. And let me trim, trim, trim. And we're going to pull this and see there's like a little V. We're going to sew this down. going to trim that off. All right, and we're going to pull up on this one. And you just want to, I back stitch a little bit on the little V area because that's when we open it, how the, the zipper head's not flying off. So that's all done right there. Then we're gonna take the slip pocket. And we are going to line this up. You wanna position it A half an inch up. I'm just going to move the pocket zipper pocket because I'm notorious for accidentally sewing over it. <laughs> and I'm just going to pop a pin in there. Okay. And we're going to go one eighth of an inch all the way around. And I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and the end and just do a quick little bar tack. 
To do a bar tack it it will this the pocket will be fine just top stitching it. I'm just I'm a rough person on things so this is generally why I make it I try to make things for someone like me who is heavy-handed and sometimes with even with the best attentions can mess up <laughs> Trimming the threads, removing the pins so it doesn't stab you. <laughs> okay, so our interior is absolutely done. We're going to grab our 10 inch zip number five zipper. We're going to grab our zipper tabs. And we are going to put the zipper tabs, the See, place the one and one fourth edge to edge. Okay. I feel like I made lines one and one eighth. Kendall, can you pass me the blue vinyl? Because I literally thought these were one and one fourth. And they're one and one eighth. It's right there on the table. I'm going to redo those while you're here because like little things like that, it happens. So I'm going to redraw those real quick. Making sure I do one and one fourth and not one and one eighth. Just bear with me. I'm gonna put this down here. I'm using really thin um, vinyl, and yeah. all right. All right. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. That's why you keep those scraps. We're gonna go do the one and one fourth. We're going to um, stitch this at three eighths of an inch. And if you want to, you like this. I do this still. I will draw a three eighths of an inch line. So that way. I know, then you do back stitch, go over. I'm gonna do that on the other side real quick. So we're going to fold this nice and neat, and then we're going to fold it over to the other side. And then you can pop a clip in it. Do the same thing. We're going to top stitch at 1 of an inch. And then sometimes what I do is I'll just grab my other zipper tab and bring it on over. And 
Okay. All right, so we have that. Then we're going to get our connector. And find the center. Get some double sided tape. And we are going to top stitch this one eighth of an inch going down. And again, I will just cross over so I don't break threads. Yes. <laughs> and we're going to, we have our top stitching done. And we're going to get our D ring, or I'm using a rectangle ring. And. Clip on that. Lay down your main panel towards you, and then we're going to, um, if you want to do a label, you can put it. I just have like a, a cloth one that I just, I really have to stop doing that. <laughs> my sewing machine just, I never take my foot fully off the sewing machine. Um, what we want to do, one, is find your center. And what I do is I make a small little snip, like a little V. I do it on the bottom too. Okay. And we are going to go one and a half inches down. And a, one and a half inches down from the top corner. And we are going to leave a half of inch out so so we're going to go one and a half inches down and have a half inch out and we're going to base that into place real quick Okay, and then we're going to grab our zipper tab and I'm going to make, I'm using an air erasable pen that it just disappears relatively quickly actually. Um, we are going to make sure our zipper is coordinated to the right side. If you wanted to open it from left to right, look, right to left. There's no real wrong. So she put down that she likes to position her zipper head closing towards the connector, which actually makes a lot of sense. So I'm doing the same thing. It's going to be closing towards the connector. And let's see. We're going to, let me see what. Do I want the credit cards? No, the zipper pocket with the main. I'm just going to clip these in place. Sandwich everything together. I'm gonna sew at right sides together at three eighths of an inch. You can do based the to the main exterior at one fourth of an inch and then again at three eighths of an inch or you can just sandwich it together in these clips whatever's easier for you and just you know move move the 
the zipper hole so everything comes out even. Just have the needle down. I'm sorry, if you hear my puppy in the background, my husband went upstairs and he's seen him and now he's upset that he's not down here with us. He's a big puppy. He's getting into like the motion of like understanding um, that he can't be in the room and he even was laying down in his little mat the other day. So I was really happy about that. Okay, so... On figure 57, we're going to finger press the seams away from the main lining and we're, all, we're only top stitching the main lining. Uh, seams away from the main lining, only top stitching the main lining. Okay, let's see. Just make sure your seams are away one eighth of an inch. this second one. I'm going to use a one-eighth of an inch and base this on. I need to find my centers. We're almost there. <laughs> the purple mark is still there. Thank goodness. I'm going to place a couple clips and just base this into place at one eighth of an inch. When the when you have a lot more bulk base, there was no weight on the other one beforehand, but now there's, you know, some substantial weight. So just base it at one eighth of an inch. It'll make your life easier. <laughs> you make sure everything catches. Together and then sew this at three eighths of an inch. I have like a permanent like sticker thing, so I know we're three eighths of an inch because my machine does one fourth, uh, half inch, three fourths, and one and one fourth. So it's like a permanent thing. It's my little three eighths of an inch marker. to top stitch a one eighth of an inch making sure the seam doesn't get is away from the main lining away from the zipper Away from the main lining. So the 
the seams are away from the lining. Main lining piece. Alright. Alright, so I'm going to open this up. We are going to go around at three eighths of an inch. What I like to do, we're going to sew the exterior at one fourth of an inch and then taper it to three, the line to three eighths of an inch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw like a little T at one fourth of an inch at all corners. Therefore, when I'm sewing it around, even if I'm tapering, I know where I know where to pivot. Again, I'm a visual person, so seeing works like this help me a lot. <laughs> So what we're going to do is I like to match seam to seam and clip it and do it on the other side like that. And we're going to leave an opening in the bottom. You can do it to seven to eight inches. At first, when I heard when people when they people would have openings that big, I'm like, I don't need it that big. There's a reason. It's easier birthing, and then when you turn it inside out to top stitch that lining, it just is like nice, clean, and crisp. So, lining three eighths of an inch, and then we're gonna start going to one fourth of an inch when it comes down to the exterior. Okay, let's get it to go. Let's go. Three to the inch, back stitch, get to that mark, and then pivot. We're still doing three eighths of an inch, raw sides together, and as we transition into exterior, one I want to make sure the line everything's lining up nicely. We're going to go to one fourth of an inch. You can clip it all the way around. Whatever is easier for you to. Remember, I'm moving things off my table because I knock everything down when I'm sewing. My bees match up perfectly. Yay! That makes me so happy. <laughs> And then when you get to the connector, just, you know, do a couple back stitches for good measure. It won't hurt. And as we transition to the lining again, we're going to start going to that three eighths of an inch. So it could be nice and taut in there. I'm going to go to this area and back side. All right. All right, we're now going to trim our seams and birth this bag and close it up. And we're almost at the finishing point. You just have to make the strap after that. So I'm just going to pink. It helps reduce bulk. Make sure you don't pink into your seam allowance and do not pink into the, the opening. So you pink the opening, then it just makes it a little bit more difficult to um, show, like close it shut. And I'm not gonna pink over the um, little tail 
it, it's an anchor now, so. Getting to one eighth of an inch. All right, getting all my threads. All right, and then we're going to trim these threads real quick before I flip it. My zipper is open. I just grab a corner and I'm going to pull it through. We're going to poke out those curves as best as we can. And I'll get like a pen because I, or anything that's nice and blunt that doesn't have any sharp. And just work that around. Don't go too hard. You don't want to like rip your stitches or any of that. You just put in all this work. Okay. And then Bring this in and I'm just I'm gonna before I close up the lining I just want to make sure I like how everything is sitting which I do I do I do it looks super cute oh that's so cute <laughs> All right, so let's close up this lining and see because we did the three eighths of inch, it's not like a saggy lining. You have your zipper pocket, a slip pocket, credit cards, and another slip pocket. So let's close this up. So I'm going to poke out the corners here real quick. Get any loose, straggly threads that are like trying to hang on. And we're going to. Close this up using a one eighth of an inch. You can pop a few clips in there if you wish. And back stitch the beginning and end. I'm just getting out, I'm, I'm just putting the corners in, like making sure they're like kind of poked out so when I turn it back into the bag, they'll be easier to, um, they'll be easier to move. I totally skipped a whole bunch of opening because I was not paying attention. That's what happens when you don't pay attention. <laughs> happens to me a lot. Okay, back stitch, trim threads. poked out the corners we have this all done we just need to make the strap so you're going to take your strap you're going to find your center lining and you're going to run some double-sided tape 
on the lining, we are going to then feed our swivel class inside. We're going to just like kind of just get it in there. <laughs> it's, it's not going to get comfortable. It's in, it's in a, it's not in a great place until we create our strap. We're going to take these two raw edges and we're going to sew over them at three eighths of an inch. And I drew a line just to help me. You don't have to do that. It, uh, it helps me when I'm putting the tape on, the double-sided tape, so I know where to stop and start. I'm gonna do a few back stitches. Okay. Then we're gonna slowly remove the double-sided tape. What I like to do is, um, I like to take the very part, top part off and then press down the lining so it's already gonna go down into the tape on both sides. See, then you're not like worrying about it. And we're going to then trim this. <laughs> like she has it like lips. And, <laughs> and she says she always LLs on that part because it does look like lips. You're just going in the, a real diagonal way so that we can help really bulk and it it just sews really smooth and <laughs> see why so serious <laughs> it looks like lips okay okay so we're going to fold this in onto the line so you're just removing double-sided tape and pressing And you're going to do it on the other side too. I'm going to shimmy this up here so I can get the double sided tape down on the other side. You're just gonna move your swivel class around. It's not gonna be happy at first because it's in this big piece of fabric and it doesn't fit. Make sure you try to get as smooth as possible. And then we're going to fold it again on itself. And I'm just going to pop a clip there. Do it on this side. Clip. Okay. And we have it. We're going to now top stitch just at one eighth of an inch all the way around. And I like to kind of start. Wow, this is uh, blended pretty well with <laughs> where the the seam is. If your machine, it's four layers. So take your time. Uh, you can use a Teflon foot or whatever foot is easier for you. When I'm right here, what I do is I go through the seam, go cross over, and start there. So I'm not breaking any threads, and it's just one long, secure seam, like stitch. And then when 
we get to the seam, I'm going to back stitch. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to position this where the seam is in the inside of this and I'm going to top stitch. Now this is eight layers, but you can do this because um, this is, especially if you have very thin vinyl or if you're doing this in woven, I'm just going to top stitch this as close as I can without hitting the hardware within the, the two stitch lengths. You can rivet it too. If you're like, no, my machine is not gonna do this, you can rivet it. <laughs> there, there's rivets in the, the instructions too. But if you can just sew it, then that's a little less hardware. Yeah. All right, that's it. So we have a, I have like string hang, like that was touching my leg and for five seconds, I thought it was a spider. I just would have freaked out on you guys. <laughs> um, so we have a nice pot, uh, zipper pouch with, it's like nice and no waves, nice zipper. And I love, I actually really like the fact that she does put the closing towards this. That way if you're holding it, your stuff is not, it just, it won't fall out. You have a zipper pocket in the inside, a slip pocket, credit card slots, and another slip pocket. This is like the perfect on the go. Not a lot of interfacing. It's just perfect. So if you have any questions on reference to this pattern, please leave a question down below. I'll be more than willing to answer them. I will put the link to this pattern in the description box. If you have a question in reference to anything that I'm using, like my machine, a Juki 5550N, or tools that I use, I'll be more than willing to answer the question. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And until the next time I see you, if you can like, subscribe, and leave a comment and hit that notification bell to share if you think it's worthy, it really does help me out. Until the next time, happy sewing. Bye.